been in communications for, well, 28 years come April with my first agency, and then a year before that I was with another agency, so a total of 29 years. Elaine Sexton, who was the director of Hall County 911 while I was in college, had been a family friend for many years. My brothers, my, one of our brothers had been an EMA volunteer. My sister was a paramedic EMT, and it was something that always kind of struck my fancy. But when I was in college, Elaine kept trying to get me to come work part-time on night shift. I was like, there's no way that I can do college and do try to work part-time. I knew that I couldn't do it. So throughout college, I worked in radio because that was what my degree is in, communications. I worked at a radio station and got married my senior year in, in college. And my ex-husband was in law enforcement and there come an opening in our county for a dispatch. It was before we didn't even have basic 911. So I said, mm, I want to try it. So I started out there. And Lane, about six months into my career there, Elaine says, hey, I've got some part-time openings. You want to come to work at Hall County? So I did. Hall County had just gone from basic 911 to enhanced 911. And we were one of the first ones to, to go from pen and paper to a CAD system. So it was a totally new thing for me, going from no CAD, pen and paper, no enhanced 911, nothing. So that's how I started, and I've been there ever since. I had been with Hall County a little over a year when Alex was born. Growing up, you know, her daddy was in law enforcement, and then me being in public safety and 911, she will tell you that I am very much an overprotective mom. I, you know, where are you going? When are you going to be home? Who are you going to be with? Uh, she saw a lot of the things, and I missed a lot growing with her growing up. I did. Uh, she did not understand how overprotective I was and why until she decided to take a leap of faith and do 911 for a little while. And then she was like, I understand. But I, she said, Mommy, you're a stronger woman than I am because I can't do this. She did for five years, and she said, I just, I can't. She said, because I want to take everybody home. When I was training years ago, I would tell them this, if it is a call that bothers you to the point that you have nightmares about it, you need to talk to somebody. If it's a call that you cannot get out of your head, we need to talk. There's going to be calls that you're going to take with you forever. There's going to be calls that you're going to laugh about. There's going to be cry, calls that you cry about, and there's going to be calls that you get angry about. But if it starts eating you up inside and bothering you and bothering your, your rest, your home relationships and everything, then you need to go to a counselor. You need to talk to somebody. I've called a magnet at work. <laughs> a magnet because I seem to be one that takes a lot of suicide calls. My PTSD, I would say, came to a head in August, September of 2018 working a lot of overtime, uh, doing, I do open records, doing open records, trying to keep up with open records. I was doing GCIC, I was doing our post, trying to keep everything going and working a lot of overtime, making sure all my duties were going, my body began to shut down. I had gone to the TAC conference in August in Savannah and we kept noticing there, I was tired, really, really tired and couldn't figure out why. So when we got back, I went to the doctor. She said, we need to do some blood work on you. She said, something is just not right with you. I said, okay. A few days later, I am going into a board meeting because I was on the board at my son's school. And the doctor called and says, hey, can you come into my office? We need to see you. I was like, well, why? She said, we just really need to talk to you. I was like, okay. So I called my husband. I said, I'm leaving the board meeting. I said, the doctor's office wants to see me about my blood work. So I walked in and the doctor and the nurse practitioner were all there waiting on me and I was like, this is not good. And she says, like, your blood work's not really well. She said, we need you to go to straight to the hospital in Gainesville. She says, not to our local hospital, but we need you to go now. I was like, why? She says, your muscle enzymes and your thyroid are off the charts to the point it's unreadable. She said a lot of it's caused by stress and things like that. She said, you need to go now. 
I said, do I have time to go home and get some clothes, a ch change of clothes and to make arrangements for our, two of our kids that were still at home? She said, yes. So I called my husband, he said, okay, I'll have everything ready. So we expected just to go down to the ER and be in and out, no problem. Well, they said, nope, guess what, you're getting admitted. They'd done the blood work again and said, yes, you, we can't read your levels. That's how bad they are. You're on the verge of totally shutting down. I said, okay. So they admitted me, and right at two and a half days in, I was sitting up at the bed. I, I felt great the whole time. I was talking to our pastor, my sister-in-law, my brother-in-law, my father-in-law, and my little great niece were all in their room visiting with me. And we're talking, and husband's there too, and I said, you know, I feel funny. They were like, what do you mean? And I said, I, I don't feel right. And my sister-in-law said, Lee, your face is droopy. So they called for the nurse. The nurse come in. The next thing I know, they're calling a stroke. Good. I had a stroke. I remember bits and parts being taken down and them talking to me and then giving me, asking if they could give me TPA, which is a blood clotting medicine. I had, I couldn't use my right arm, I couldn't use my right leg, and my speech was very, very slurred. They gave me TPA, and it was like almost automatic. But then listening in the background with, my, with what I know, I'm listening to them putting the helicopter on standby for Grady. I'm listening to them tell my vitals and everything, and and excuse my language, but I'm sitting there saying, oh shit, this is really happening. I go out and I cry. I do cry, but I stand a lot on my faith. I pray a lot. I sometimes just have to get out and walk away, and my husband laughs because there's sometimes when I just want to go for a drive, and we'll go for a drive. I will go out and walk and hike. In March of 2011, I was at work at Hall County and had left work to go to a doctor's appointment when I got a call from Northeast Georgia Medical Center that my sister and her husband had not shown up for work. I knew my sister and her husband were having marital issues because the weekend before I had helped her change the locks in the house because she was scared of him and there had been some domestic issues but neither one of them had shown up. And I was asked if I would go check on them. I said, okay. I got there and both cars were there. The doors were locked. I went to every door and window trying and I couldn't get in. I could see Maggie, which was their poodle. Maggie was laying on the back of the couch. I knew something was wrong because Maggie wouldn't get off the couch. I couldn't even get her to come to the window. You know, she would, would raise up and look at me, wag her tail, and lay back down. I said, something's wrong. I said, just something's wrong. The Sheriff's Department showed up, uh, my niece Crystal showed up, and my brother showed up, and we got the key. Uh, the Sheriff's Department and myself and my brother started to make entry because they'd gone to every window also. We stepped over to the threshold of the door. I was behind the three deputies and I heard one of the deputies hollered, I need a med unit here, 1018, reference a gunshot. One of the deputies that responded was also our cousin and he turned around and basically pushed me out the door and caught me before I hit the ground. I remember screaming. I remember screaming. And I don't remember much for a little while after that. It was like your worst nightmare had come true. And I'm sitting there thinking, what the hell happened? You know, I talked to her the night before, she was fine. You know, what, everything was going through my mind. What caused her to snap that day, I'll never know. 
But I know she took his life and ended up taking her own. Bill had been in public safety. He had been a firefighter and a paramedic. Uh, my sister had been an EMT, and then she was a paramedic, and she was also a nurse. Um, he had worked for the fire department and then gone from the fire department working at the hospital and education services where he taught and worked in the ER. My sister had been a paramedic at White County, Dawson County, um, and then she was an instructor at Lanier Tech and then a nurse in the ER. I did go for counseling afterwards. I did. Because uh, I blamed myself for a little while. I blamed myself as to why did I see any signs? Uh, why did I know this? Uh, what could I have done differently? I was angry at a lot of people for a little while. I was angry at my sister. I was angry at Bill. I was angry at the hospital because she had sent numerous emails saying, hey, look, my husband's having an affair and he's possibly doing it on duty. <laughs> I was angry at a lot of, um, I was angry at God. But then I had to come to the realization, she's the one that made that decision, not me. She's the one that chose to do the things that she did. You gotta take care of you. If you don't take care of you, nobody else is going to. When you are having some mental health issues, take a mental health day. Talk to your supervisors, talk to those around you. Have a support system, because if you don't, you're going to find yourself spiraling downward. I'm blessed that I have an awesome support system. Not only get my coworkers, but my family and my friends. They don't always understand the nature of the beast, but they at least will have a listening ear.